I was checking my site and also off the back of that, obviously, because it's all about me, me, me. And I also noticed that, God damn it, the DJing thing for me has been slow, dry and non-existent since things have kind of got back to normal, which I kind of anticipated. I kind of thought, you know, if people far bigger than me with far bigger followings and notoriety and whatever may be an experience were finding it difficult to get back on it and to maybe get back in the swing of things especially to the level that they were prior because i'd imagine like a lot of people i think people don't really keep this in mind but i think you know some people mention oh yeah if you're a dj or if you're a footballer you get paid a certain amount right so imagine if you're a dj i remember once being on a forum once a reddit forum or something or something i was on and i remember someone talking about fees and stuff and somebody said that they had uh, booked i think Masioplex. this was maybe when he was at his pomp let's say maybe 2017 maybe before even before that maybe 2014 right when Masioplex was it was everywhere and someone said something like oh he got paid in the bit against a big range but between the range of like 10 to 30 grand for a gig he played some festival date somewhere which was to me didn't make any sense like oh my god imagine getting paid 10 to 30 and i think at the time i was djing quite a lot also so i could only compare myself to him i'll be like hold on imagine getting paid 10 to 30 grand to play a gig like an hour and a half or two hours which is basically the same thing that i do so i it, it just couldn't i couldn't wrap my head around it but then obviously when you grow up and you get a little bit more experience in life you do your thing you start to realize that you know all money is relative so just because he earns a certain amount doesn't mean he's just you know balling out of control at the time more 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 so than likely or more likely than not he's probably got a lifestyle or bills or responsibilities that would push whatever he makes to its brink to its real extreme so he might have two homes he might live in a really nice home he might put his kids in private school he might have retired his partner whatever right all these things are helping family out this is going to take huge chunks of money out of that so you're having to basically so i'd imagine a lot of the top djs are basically having to keep working just to keep the lights on even though they get paid really high amounts right in that regard and then, and then also there's the aspects i feel like in the dj world maybe out maybe with the exception of edm and tech house and maybe a few other places genres it's not really it's not really the done thing to basically flaunt your wealth the only way people can kind of know you have money is if they show your studio and you have all the equipment or you have all the, you know, you have, a, you know, the latest CDJs and the latest DJ mixer. That's the only way people can kind of, or the rotary mix, even indoors. That's the only way people really see your wealth. But you don't really see DJs posting their cars, posting what they're wearing, you know, unless you're like a Peggy Goo or whatever. They're quite humble. So maybe there is a segment of people out there who are baiting and balling out of control and doing well. But I'd imagine the majority of them are still having to tour just to keep the lights on, even though they're making loads per gig. So when I saw that, I was like, oof, if they're struggling to get back on the hamster wheel, then just imagine me, right, playing in bars and pubs around the local area that I was playing at for the most part. It's going to be an absolute horror show because I pre correctly predicted that a lot of these places, like, again, I'd be playing these places. My whole my whole kind of approach to DJing, especially taking it in terms of a professional level, getting paid for it, was a little bit, you know, uh, was a little bit unconventional. The whole reason why I wanted to go to the approach that I was doing playing in local bars and pubs is because I wanted to actually perfect my ability to actually DJ and play for a crowd. How to basically get regular normies to stay and hear me play music, even though most of the things I'll be playing won't be stuff they'll be into. So my kind of attitude was to, okay, I'm going to go into this place. I'm not going to be a jukebox, but I'm going to be, I'm not going to be a human jukebox, but I'm going to be like a person. I'll be like, hey, I'll give you one and you give me two. I'll give you one, you give me three. I'll give you one, you give me two. Right? I kind of, I kind of earn your trust through the selection of tunes. And then maybe through that way, I'll be able to come like a little bit of a local legend. People will be able to maybe, you know, that kind of thing, that kind of weird idea. Because my, again, my kind of premise behind it was anyone, in my opinion, again, this is just me. I feel like anyone who's got good taste and who's got the technical proficiency to basically mix a song from track one to track two or from, sorry, from deck one to deck two can DJ in most clubs and most festivals. I think most people that go to these places are already smashed out of their faces, they're drunk, they're high, they're whatever. As long as you're able to make sure people stay on a dance floor and don't leave. So you're not, you know, if you go into a techno party, 
you know the last thing you should do is play tech is play break beats right because you're going to clear the dance floor don't play break beats don't play vocal house don't play hip-hop they're going to run away as long as you can stick to what people are playing in the space that you're in you're going to be fine so i was of the thinking what's the point of competing in the level of like playing at these warehouses while i was going in terms of hackney wig or in the air or in the quiz core places where most of these people aren't really that good when I, I'd, rather, I'd rather get good as a dj first and then get get good first playing in normie places and then use that to kind of shoehorn my way into like other places a bit of a backwards way what i should have done was done it was done both i should have went i should have done a two-pronged attack i should have done the normie thing and also attacked the kind of you know club circuit that i kind of go and party at because you still need to be able to play even though it's easy to do you still need to do it you know what i mean that kind of thing so i didn't do that messed up in that regard in big in a big way but it was still difficult to get back on the normie circuit because i was of the thinking even even when i played i would always thought to myself like why are these guys giving me 50 pounds 100 pounds 150 pounds 200 pounds a player set in these bars when really if they had somebody that could put together a pretty sick playlist like a fresh one maybe every week they refresh it right or every two weeks they have a really good playlist that can play sequence not like a random one you just random shuffle an actual maybe no a sequence playlist that can actually start well that you can basically program for four or five hours so it can carry through the entirety of the night if someone put for the banging place and they just paid them 100 quid a month this place could still be rocking the same way with a DJ. They don't really need a DJ to play in these places, especially some of these other pubs I played in, in like a Dorsony sort of area that were quite quiet during some flyers were quiet if it wasn't a pay week or whatever, or people just didn't want to go out. So it, it didn't really make any sense for them to take money at the till and pay a Pacific guy to DJ, hire the equipment, all that stuff. If they could just bang on the Spotify playlist and do the thing. And then of course the pandemic hit, you know people weren't really you know really booking people in that regard um, maybe the no, no, the pandemic here and then you know we had limitations and restrictions in terms of how people can go into this place blah 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 and i think these bars and pubs got a bit scrappy and got a bit resourceful and they figured out how to get good players they figured out how to play good mixes on their system and you know the rest was history and then since then those sort of opportunities have been few and far between for me in that regard so much so that i checked my flipping um ra flipping profile and from what I can see here, again, this is my RA profile, pretty basic, as you can see, the list of places I played at, you know, you can tell most of my bars and stuff, whatever, even though I've been playing since 2010, well, registered on here 2010, but I think first time I actually got behind a pair of decks might have been 2008 or something, right? So it's been a while. Um, and again, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not pursuing it in the hopes of being the next Ricardo Vera Lobos. Like I've always said, I want to be the person that's able to play like, you know, good, what, 36 odd sort of you know dates or so per year maybe no let's say 50 dates per year in like some of the best clubs in the world and be able to kind of like imagine being a resident at robert johnson a resident at flipping um uh what's it called a resident at club division there um you know these kind of seminal sort of places you know be able to pop in that fold twice a year four times a year maybe guest appearances here and there at fabric just kind of you know not too much just kind of casual stuff that would be i'll be more than happy with and then of course doing the stuff i'm doing but still it's concerning because the last event i legitimately got paid for to go and play again not counting my live streams was the 24th of july 2021 was the last time somebody said hey come to my bar would like you to play there or come to my venue come and play here's some money or cover your uber whatever just you know because i always say like the professional side is when some sort of money is exchanged either it's to cover the uber or to pay you a fee it's 24th of july 2021 so in a few months it's coming up to a whole year since the last time i've been paid to play somewhere which is concerning for me but it also makes me think if i'm struggling like this it's hard to say i'm struggling because i haven't really been trying can you struggle if you're not trying i haven't really been trying to play i don't want not email because before when i was on it i'd be emailing clubs and stuff and playing you know consistently in different places which is why you know 2019 was a flipping mad one but still if i'm struggling to get gigs just imagine what the pe the person is like because i always say i always split the djing profession in like three tiers right abc and each tier has three different tiers in in it so maybe i'm like c3 so imagine if you're like c2 c1 they're probably struggling still it's like it's bleak out there i mean it's bleak out there um 
and especially in the uk we don't have you know residency culture isn't really a big thing it's starting to come up a little bit more because you know of course with the pandemic it limited the venues abilities to flying resident to flying guests which is the only reason why it wasn't like they started doing residencies because they felt like they could want to give back and build the, the scene and whatnot they don't care they just couldn't book you know ricardo seven times a year so they then decided to switch their approach but then again you know that's something that's got to get you know it's, it's something that's kind of people have to get used to still i feel like a lot of people still mostly go out to see a particular person play you know again i mentioned the other day that i'm a big fan of fold and i go there blindly a lot but i don't think a lot of punters do that to be honest i think a lot of punters book based on who's playing or maybe an area or maybe something whatever or maybe a date so to get them to go out blind and just trust the programming of a place and trust an unknown person myself is going to be difficult so you know it's just a mad one it really is but 20 2004 2001's a mad time until now and then since i've been paid to play somewhere and then in terms of not trying i would say i haven't tried mostly because i've been focusing on this obviously and obviously doing other things outside of djing that I thought would be more beneficial in terms of pushing my career forward but i feel like as per usual when it comes to me i always need to approach things like at the same time in order to kind of get momentum as soon as i start to kind of focus on one thing i would then end up losing track of or kind of neglect the other thing that i'm meant to be doing at the same time because i think even at the time when i was trying to get back on it again i was thinking of doing a live stream every week sort of like making it okay a quasi sort of club night which was my kind of um which you've got here listed here right the test mix i was meant to do that um every month at the end of the month do a test mix um 61 i still haven't recorded yet you know still in the flipping in the in the in the deep, in deep space somewhere so i just gotta get that level of consistency again and i think that's something that i've kind of noticed in myself going forward um in life in general you know as long as i'm consistent and i'm kind of turn up and show up usually things work out but i can't really be too upset that i haven't been getting booked in places because i haven't really been consistent in terms of doing this sort of stuff so it makes sense that the universe isn't really providing me with chances to maybe showcase my skills in that regard going forward but you know hopefully fingers crossed those things will change going forward but i just and i saw that myself and i was like oh my god man 